The next piece of the pie is really um, understanding your financial uh, relationship with tax and startups. Uh, I'm going to give the camera over here to Gary Topol, my personal accountant for the last five or six years. He has done wonders for me in helping me to start these businesses and understand these businesses. So now we're at the accounting offices of Gary Topol in Long Island, New York. And Gary, you've been my accountant for many years now for newgradoptometry.com, optometrystudents.com, my personal stuff, and all the new fun ventures that we're doing. So, you know, I'm, I'm excited to have you here to help out all the viewers. Yeah. Well, thank you for having me, Matt. Yeah, my pleasure. So I think like the biggest thing that people wonder about is when you're going into a practice to, to, to actually practice optometry, what's the difference between an independent contractor, which takes like a 1099 that everyone says, or, or an employee of the practice, which is on a W-2? And what are the main differences between those things? Well, the key word is independent in the phrase independent contractor. Um, let's talk about an employee first. An employee basically is somebody who is, uh, has, an employer has control over their employee. They set the hours, the days of the week, what the employee actually does. An independent contractor is independent of that. For example, I'm your accountant. You call me on the phone, I either take your phone call or I don't. <laughs> but more often than not, I will, but then I tell you, yes, Matt, I'll work on your books, not now, but on Tuesday or on Wednesday, right. and I'm being independent. You, can, you don't call me and say, Gary, I need you to come to the office today and work from 9 to 5 and see 12 patients. Right. That's an employee-employer relationship. Um, now, what's the main differences from, I guess, a higher level of tax implications of, of, the, of the independent contractor versus the employee? What is the different tax scenarios for them? Um, and then I guess the next follow-up question will be pros and cons of either one from a tax standpoint. Okay, well, an employee gets paid a set wage either based on number of hours worked or a set weekly wage or an annual wage broken down you know, in, in different pay periods. And out of that wage, Social Security, Medicare tax, federal tax, state and local taxes are deducted, and the employee goes home with a net paycheck. And they know, I'm going to show up for work, I get paid this amount, or I get a certain number of sick days, I get a certain number of vacation days, and uh, over the course of the year, I'll make X amount of dollars, whatever that is. If you're a, a, an independent contractor, you receive a Form 1099. It's just a different government form, but there are no taxes withheld from it. An independent contractor is responsible for his or her own taxes. Um, instead of it instead of the taxes being withheld every week or every month out of the paycheck, the independent contractor must make quarterly installment payments to the government. Uh, additionally, when you're an employee, half of the Social Security and Medicare tax is withheld from your paycheck, and the other half is paid by your employer. When you're an independent contractor, since you're both employee and employer to yourself, you pay both halves. So where an employee has 7.65% of their wages withheld as Medicare and Social Security, an independent contractor pays 15.3%. Mm -hmm. But there's a flip side to that. An independent contractor can deduct ordinary and necessary business expenses dollar for dollar from their gross. So let's say somebody was an independent contractor making $100,000 a year, mm -hmm. and they had to pay rent, their phone bill or a cell phone bill. They use their car as part of their business expenses. Um, and they had some other stationery and supplies, uh, medical supplies. Um, I'm not sure exactly yeah. you know, the, 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 the specifics of it. But w when you add up all of those supplies and, and the auto expense and the rent and the, and the telephone, it amounts to $30,000 a year. Well, instead of paying tax on the full 100000 an independent contractor gets to deduct these ordinary and necessary business expenses and would pay tax on $70,000. they are paying tax on a smaller amount, and it saves them, the, the deductions save them federal and state and local taxes, as well as the Social Security and Medicare tax. Got it. Where a salaried employee gets $100,000 a year in salary, doesn't have any of these expenses, they pay tax on the full $100,000. You wear two hats. On whatever days of the week you go into the optometrist office, you're examining eyes and 
uh, prescribing glasses or contact lenses, you're a salaried employee during those days that you're there. Mm -hmm. But on the other days when you're out meeting people and lecturing about optometry or um, working on your websites, you're, an in, you're independent of anybody else. You're in your own business doing that. Mm -hmm. So while, as, as you're practicing your own business, while you're doing that, you can deduct any ordinary and necessary business expenses. It's graphic design, newsletter fees, all that right, stuff. Right, all, all, of the, all of the expenses that go along with it. Um, it's not to say that a salaried employee may not be able to deduct some expenses also. It's just more difficult. When you're a salaried employee, you can deduct unreimbursed business expenses. Um, the problem is there are limitations to it. As an independent contractor, you're able to deduct dollar for dollar all of the business-related expenses. As a salaried employee, th there are certain steps that you have to go through. Now, if someone thinking, I want to be an independent contractor, do they, can they do it themselves? Do they need to be an LLC? Do they need to be an LLP? How does it work? You can be an independent contractor as an individual, as an, uh, part of a partnership, or as an owner of a corporation. Uh, let's start from the easiest first, a sole proprietor. Basically, Matt Geller OD, you're, you're an independent contractor. You file an extra form attached to your tax return. It's called a Schedule C, and it lists the business income and your business expenses. Mm -hmm. That's literally the business is my name here. Right. right. It's my name. People right. get confused with that. They're like, what do you mean your business is called Matt Geller? No, that's, that's I'm an independent contractor. Just right. me. And if we go to the next level, you can be a single member LLC, and you would be Matt Geller OD LLC. LLC is a legal designation. It stands for Limited Liability Company. Mm -hmm. What that does is it, it protects you from certain lawsuits or, or uh, creditors, but not from malpractice. Mm -hmm. Got it. Corporation works in a similar fashion. However, a corporation um, takes on another level in that it's, it's a separate legal person. And if you form a corporation, your corporation would have to pay you a salary. Got it. On the other hand, the partnership is similar to a sole proprietorship. It's just more than one person doing business together. If you and I, if I was an optometrist, we formed, uh, we were practicing together under a partnership name, um, we would be, it would be similar to two sole proprietorships working side by side. We're sharing overhead, we draw whatever profits. As a partnership, there's no protection. Oh. As an LLC, as a partnership operating as an LLC, you have the same LLC protection as you would have as a single member LLC. Now, where do you come into the picture as, as, as the account at the end of the day? And why does, why should, I mean, this is something coming from me especially. I mean, you've saved my butt and really helped me understand this stuff. Why should other people be doing that same thing? Why should they find a professional account? Well, you need an accountant to pull it all together for you and to keep you on course. I'm there to guide you along, to help you set up whatever method works best for you. Right. You like QuickBooks. Somebody else might like doing it on Excel. And well, we set up how you keep track, what it is you need to keep track of, um, what pitfalls to look for maybe, and, and how to get the most bang for your buck and save right. as much taxes as possible. And then at the end of the year or the beginning of the following year when it's time to do the tax return, uh, I would go through all the information, hopefully you'd have it in some nice orderly fashion, and help you better organize it if it's not in a nice orderly fashion, and help you get organized better for the next year, and remind you of certain uh, information that you need that will help self save taxes. Sure. Cool. How, any uh, way people get in touch with you individually, if they want to reach out to you, just you know, need, a, need some advice, can they shoot you an email? Or Sure. My email address is garytopplecpa at gmail.com, okay. or they can call me on the phone, 516-595-7080. Great. Cool. Yeah, I'll put it in the, in the video. Okay. I'll have a little card under <laughs> me. <with> the <laughs> lower thirds, it's called. <laughs> cool. All right. Well, thank okay. you. Appreciate it. You're welcome. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, no problem. Take care. So Gary had a lot of really interesting information there and what I want to mention is, is when you're thinking about starting your company, you're either probably going to want to do it as either an LLC, S Corp, C Corp. The main differences between these from my standpoint, this is the most simple entity to run and you get the protection. There are limits. An S Corp is interesting in that you can only have one class of stock. 
just common stock. But the difference, the thing with S Corp is it's nice because you can pay yourself a salary, a small salary, because the IRS requires you to, and any profits that come from the company get passed to you and get taxed at your income level rate. So there's no tax on the profit of the company. The company doesn't get taxed. Any profits go through to you and you pay those taxes on your income rate. Now the company does pay payroll taxes um, and the things that come along with that because remember you have to pay yourself a salary. A C Corp you could have multiple classes of stock where you can, if you have an investor you can give them a certain stock, founders them a certain stock, um, and, and common stock for those who also own pieces of it. This has the most protection but you also pay a tax on the actual uh, money that's left over in the company in addition to your own payroll taxes and your own personal taxes. That's an overview though.